Hello and welcome to the second episode of Simple Explanations. Today we're going to be talking about how to flatten a dependency graph into a serial list. Flattening a dependency graph is also called topological sorting. You might be wondering what a dependency graph is or why you might want to flatten one. For this video, you can think of a dependency graph as a way of describing actions to do with the ability to specify any special order that the action should be done in. An example of this could be that you have a list of chores to do, like take the trash bins to the curb, cut up a watermelon, rake the leaves, unload the dishwasher, put the dirty clothes through the washer and dryer, fold the laundry, and finally relax when done. You have some freedom in what order to do these chores, but some orderings make more sense than others. You probably want to cut the watermelon and rake the leaves before you take the trash bins to the curb, since they're going to make more trash. You also may want to unload the dishwasher before cutting up the watermelon so you have clean dishes for that. You also are going to need to wash and dry the dirty clothes before you can fold them. From here, we can combine all of these things into a single graph by saying that they all must be done before we can relax. This is a dependency graph, and more specifically, it's, an, it's a directed acyclical graph, or DAG, DAG. We call it directed because the arrow of time dictates what order things happen in, and it's acyclical because there are no loops. If we needed to relax before taking out the trash, that would be a loop and there'd be no way to um, start a chore that we could actually finish the sequence in without violating a dependency. For the purpose of, of game development, you can imagine these chores being replaced by game dev things like pathfinding, AI planning, applying damage from combat, or serializing player state. For graphics, it could be rendering things like a G-buffer fill, deferred lighting, a forward pass, or tone mapping. But going back to the chores example, assuming we're not going to multitask, we need to come up with a flattened list of the chores in the order that we're going to do them. For this, we're going to use something called Khan's algorithm, which is surprisingly simple. The first thing you do is find a node which doesn't have any dependencies. We have a couple choices, but we'll pick this one. Put this node into the flattened list as the first item to do. Next, you pick another node which doesn't have any dependencies. We'll pick this one. Now put that one into the flattened list as the next item to do. As we're taking nodes off, we're actually removing dependencies from other nodes, which make them available to go to the output list too. You continue doing this until you run out of nodes, at which point you are done and have the flattened list of chores to do in the order that you should do them. While flattening the graph, there were times when we had some free choice about which item to take from the graph next and put into the flattened list. In real life, this lets us not be robots and retain our free will, but in the computing world, this is actually a place for optimization to occur. If you had an injured foot, you might change the order of the work so that you walked around less. If you were trying to look busier than you actually were to avoid getting more chores, you might actually choose uh, to maximize walking around or how long it took to do them. In the context of these nodes being tasks for a computer to do, you might reorder the work to minimize the number of thread synchronization primitives used, like mutexes, or maybe to consolidate disk reads, or if there were temporary buffers used to communicate data between jobs, you might minimize the amount of buffer memory used to store that communicated data. The important takeaway, though, is that the freedom of choice can be leveraged to suit whatever needs you have without violating the constraints of the dependency graph. Actually, finding the best ordering for the nodes can be a challenging problem, though. The most straightforward way is probably just to brute force test all possible ways that you can make choices at each step and find the one that best suits your needs. If there are too many choices to make that feasible, Monte Carlo Tree Search may be a better option. When we started, I said that we were going to assume that we weren't multitasking these chores. Strangely, as multi-threaded as a GPU is, the modern APIs basically issue serial commands and command lists to these massively parallel beasts, so from that perspective they actually look pretty single-threaded. That means that if you describe your render pipeline as a dependency graph like this, Khan's algorithm is great for turning that into serial work to send to the GPU via a command list. In such a render graph, you presumably would know which resources you were reading and writing to, so you could order the work to minimize resource transitions, or possibly to minimize the memory usage of temporary render targets used as scratch pads for things like separable blurs or gbuffer filling. If thinking about CPU side work in a job system, however, multitasking is a real thing that computers want to do. I'll leave a link in the video comments about uh, how to run a DAG in a multi-threaded situation, but the short version is that uh, a thread looking for work can execute any work item that doesn't have a dependency, but we leave the dependencies hooked up until work is done, at which point we break them and the next items are ready to be executed. Lastly, if you need a faster algorithm for flattening a DAG, they do exist, 
Just give a Google to, to the term topological sorting and have a read. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.